My name is Daniel Meachin. I'm a biophysicist uh, working at the interface of scholarly communication and collaborative um, communication of research <laughs> via Wikimedia platforms. I'm particularly interested in Wikidata, which is uh, the database that anyone can edit. It follows the Wikipedia model for the wiki for the encyclopedia that anyone can edit. And um, yeah, within that space, there are lots of opportunities for uh, research workflows and collaboration workflows to interact and to intersect. And uh, for instance, in uh, Wikipedia, you have articles about lots of scholarly subjects. They uh, reference materials uh, that might include scholarly publications. Some of these scholarly publications might have images in them that might find their reuse in Wikipedia articles or in other places in the Wiki ecosystem. Then there is metadata about publications, about, um, let's say, uh, scientific methods or uh, mathematical formulas. And th those, those metadata, they find their way into Wikidata, where they're further described and made available to machines. Uh, through which you can then find uh, those materials uh, via search engines and so on. So I'm interested in uh, several aspects of this. First, um, the uh, coverage of such matters um, means that there is open knowledge available about uh, the, these topics. Then the fact that these articles or these resources are being generated and maintained collaborative, uh, collaboratively is interesting to me. And I think more of the science ecosystem should work this way, where everybody contributes what they can whenever they can. And in a way that everybody can participate, anybody can review what ha has been done. Um, I'm also interested in um, scaling things up. So uh, one of the aspects of the Wikimedia ecosystem is anyone can contribute. And uh, the way they do it uh, initially is always essentially by hand. You press that edit button, you make a, uh, an edit that can be small or large, but uh, it is a single edit initially. And then you press the save button and you're done. You've changed something in the ecosystem. And uh, I actually like that attitude. I think it should be uh, broader. People should look around what they find on the internet, where they can find it, uh, be it open source software, or be it maps uh, that they can contribute, where there is an invitation to contribute. And I would like this also to be extended to like research. If they find a, a bit of research that they find interesting, I would like them to be able to engage with that, maybe provide an update uh, or check the methods that have been used in a uh, publication that they find, uh, things like that. Or annotate when they, they say, oh, we've used this chemical substance, but it's just given as a, as a string, uh, as a name string, then they could make uh, something uh, to annotate it such that it actually links to a place that has information about that particular chemical, right? And uh, yeah, then I'm interested in not just the content aspects, but also the technical aspects. So how can we build workflows so that this kind of content can be generated, curated, improved, uh, updated, verified, queried in a way that is uh, that involves machines, automated tools, um, I'm part of a team that actually builds a tool to uh, navigate through scholarly knowledge based on uh, its representation in Wikidata. Um, yeah, and in all of that, I actually like to interact with people who uh, share those interests or who at least have an overlap. That overlap might be in the subject matter, it might be in the technical aspects, might be in the social aspects of collaboration or something, how all of that affects uh, society writ large. Um, I am also interested in ways in which these collaborative aspects can find their way into education. Um, yeah, and then also how multilinguality or plurality of cultures and, and backgrounds finds their way into collaboration or into research workflows. Why should researchers explore these new features, these communities? Why can't they just use traditional techniques or techniques that already exist at research institutes and universities? They can and do use existing technologies, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Uh, but in many cases, um, the um, research workflows that they have, they're not optimal. Um, to some extent, that's by necessity because research involves doing new things. 
Um, but uh, to other uh, other parts of that are not by necessity. Uh, they just prefer to reuse or use, keep using the things that they have been using so far, which in many cases means that they are using software or other resources that are not open, which makes it difficult for others to actually reproduce the science, which makes it difficult for others to participate in the research process. And uh, in general, uh, if they're using closed uh, resources, closed platforms, at some point somebody that uh, has control over these resources, they might pull the plug, which means that uh, the researchers would then have to change their workflows at a point when uh, it's not up to them to decide it, but they would need to react to someone else's decision. But if they were to use open workflows, uh, then they could decide when to switch uh, from one um, tool or work uh, or data set to another from one resource to another and the wikimedia ecosystem is a uh, an ecosystem in which you can essentially do the entire research workflow in the open and so you would always be in uh, like in power to decide which tool you want to uh, replace and when you want to replace it and with whom you want to share whatever you've done. Some of the other is existing tools and workflows they uh, actually place limits on what you're allowed to share. Briefly, can you name any interesting tools that scientists might want to check out in the Wikimedia platform? <sighs> the most interesting that is most generally uh, applicable is probably the thank you button. Um, thanks is uh, an underused uh, mechanism of social interaction, and that is also true in the scholarly ecosystem. Uh, whenever you're doing research, uh, you're building on stuff that others have done. Maybe other researchers, maybe people who build infrastructure, people who provide the rooms, the facilities that we're using, people who are filming things that are happening. Uh, you are using uh, things that other people have done or created or maintained. And having a thank you button that would work seamlessly as it does in the wiki ecosystem uh, would be a very nice feature. Other features that are a bit more elaborate would be um, things how do I report an error uh, in, to a database if I have uh, used their data and worked with it? Uh, this happens a lot in the wiki ecosystem, which reuses lots of materials from lots of different sources. And so uh, the materials that we get from different resources, they're being curated in the wiki ecosystem. They might have been uh, curated in the source ecosystem as well, and some of those sources are actually aggregators. Um, but there is curation happening on the wiki uh, media end. So this might be we get a picture and then we actually write what, what is depicted in the picture. And maybe we do it in more detail than uh, the original source did, or we did it, do it in more languages, things like that. And given the multitude of um, systems that the wiki ecosystem interacts with, we have a hard time actually um, bringing back all these annotations to the sources. Some of them don't want to have it, that's fine. Uh, others might want to have it, but the workflows are not developed enough uh, to make it easy for them to consume all the curation that has happened in the ecosystem or to filter it for those kind of changes that they would actually have an interest in. Um, and another tool uh, that I'm particularly interested in is one that allows you to browse the linked data to experience it, um, which is available in Wikidata. So Wikidata is a knowledge graph, which means it connects individual pieces of knowledge with each other in a graph-like fashion. And uh, that knowledge graph has 100 million points. And so navigating that graph is a bit uh, difficult for uh, a human. And uh, especially if you're new to that system. So there's, uh, um, there's a, an approach that helps with that, which is basically called the Wikidata front end. And uh, one of them that allows you to browse the scholarly literature or the scholarly knowledge in more, uh, general is called Scolia. Um, what it does is it basically opens different kinds of windows into the graph. So for instance, you can profile um, let's say a research topic, you can profile a researcher, you can profile a research award, a research um, publication, a research conference, things like that. Um, and a research organization or maybe a gene or a species. Um, and then uh, what the profile would give you is an overview of the knowledge that Wikidata has about this kind of thing. And the way it provides this profile is it queries the Wikidata database in a way that is um, flexible enough 
to uh, understand, oh, now you're, you're asking for a specific entity of this kind. It recognizes the kind and it recognizes the entity and then basically asks Wikidata, please give me all the things uh, that you know about this uh, entity and formatted it for this particular kind of profile. And then in the profile, for instance, about a topic, you would get the most recent publications on the topic. You would get the people who are, uh, are active on the topic. You would get information about the methods that are used uh, for research on the topic. You would get the most uh, prominent uh, publications uh, on the topic. And you would get uh, an idea about, um, let's say, topics that cure or cure of the target topic or about organizations that are involved in research about the topic. 